how's this been for you, seeing this sort of being being reenacted out in many ways on the big screen, uh, uh, you know, for entertainment purposes in Hollywood? Has, has, it, has it been a, a soothing process for you in any way? No, to the contrary, it's been quite miserable. Uh, whether it be in motion pictures or in books, most of the creators are trying to rewrite history, even making it more salacious, if one would think that was even possible. Uh, Quentin Tarantino was the first to come to the family members and speak to them and take our feelings and our knowledge as well into consideration. One of the things that struck me about what he said uh, he wanted to portray about your sister is that uh, the woman was not defined simply by the murder that, that brought her to so many's attention in such a horrific way. Uh, I wanted to show her alive and her life beforehand and you got a chance to go to the set, I believe, and, and, and see Margot Robbie portraying your sister. What, what was that like? What did you feel? Uh, actually, Margot did an outstanding job. At one point, when I was on set, I had her in my ear, uh, on a mic, in my ear, and I actually shed a tear because she sounded just like Sharon. It was very, very interesting. It was a, a bit an a opportunity to visit again with the live Sharon, not just a Sharon on the film screen. Because you gave her, I believe, you gave Margot some of Sharon's jewelry and a bottle of her perfume. Was it almost a strange feeling of, of wanting her to be alive in that mixed feelings way? No, not at all. I, I'm very clear on the fact that my sister is dead. Uh, I, I'm, it's purely speculation. Margot didn't state how having those items made her feel, but um, I'm sure it helped her feel quite close to Sharon. It's such a long time ago. Uh, for many people, this could even be the first time they're aware of the awful events of those nights and, and the, the horror of it all. Uh, I know you spent your life campaigning to keep those involved behind bars. Um, the main perpetrator has since passed away. But um, I wonder if you can remember yourself those horrible moments back and when it happened. It, it probably doesn't feel like such a long time ago to you, does it? Not at all. I can recall it as if it were yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, uh, salacious horror... Uh, like this never leaves you. I wish I could say it did, but it does not. So I can recall it as if it were yesterday. I mean, in, I mean, it's many years ago, but some of the detail. I mean, this was horrific. I mean, we, you know, we'd be shocked today uh, by some of the uh, methods used by this brutal killing. I mean, we, some of the bodies were found with m multiple stabbings, stabbings. We're talking twenty or so more stabbings. I mean, it was. It was horrific then. I mean, it was, I mean, do you ever recover from something like that? I mean, is it something that you yourself have found difficult to cope with? It's very difficult to cope with it. it as I said, it never, the horror never leaves you. The details of, of the brutality never, ever leave you. I, I think I read somewhere that you... Uh, actually, at one point, were you not going to be there? Wasn't, what, what, hadn't your sister... You'd spoken to your sister earlier in the day and you were planning on going over to visit and you hadn't? Is that, is that right? That is correct. I had been at the house the entire summer with Abigail Folger taking me to look for private schools. Sharon had been doing that task before she had to leave to do her last, what would become her last film, 13 Chairs. Uh, so Abigail took over that task. I had only gone home to Sausalito for uh, a few weeks to pack up the family home in Sausalito. We were preparing to move back to Palos Verdes. So my job is to pack and unpack and that's what I was doing. Sharon had ordered me a beautiful uh, custom 
riding saddle, English riding sa saddle I was an equestrian. And it was coming on in her ship trunks. The trunks uh, came in late off the ship and uh, arrived after she arrived. So she was called, was very excited to tell me that the trunks were there and wanted me to come and receive my beautiful custom-made saddle that she mm. was uh, presenting me. Mm. And <clears throat> I had to get a ride from a friend because we only had one car at the time. So the young man came and had sprang his ankle playing frisbee. He had two other young men that I didn't even know carrying him in, and so that would have put two strangers at Sharon's house. She would have been fine with my friend Johnny. She knew him very well. He was like a family member, practically. Uh, but the other two fellows, not so much. So I gave her the courtesy phone call and said, you know, what had transpired, and she said, oh, sugar, it's so hot and miserable, I don't feel like putting on clothes and makeup to receive, you know, new people in the house. I said, that's what I thought your answer was going to be. We'll just do it another time. Okay. And that's the last time I ever spoke to her. Absolutely tragic, and for, but for those events, as I said, you might have been there yourself, is one of those terrible sliding doors. But so good to talk to you this morning and to hear you know, where you are with it and, and your experiences with the making of this movie as well.